Wow. I'll take the bird voice. No, that's not true. Mm -hmm. I want the bird voice. <laughs> oh, I can make the video sped up for an hour. I don't think <laughs> yeah, anyone just, wants that. <laughs> yeah, just speed up the entire thing. That's what I do on YouTube, usually. Alright, so welcome everyone to this other video of Let's Learn About People and Stalk Their Life. Oh, that's a nice hand. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and today I have another very cool special guest, and it's Gregzilla, and I think he's gonna say a couple of words about himself to introduce to the lovelies. Hello, I'm Gregzilla, aka Greg, and I am an animator. I work mainly in Toon Boom these days. Uh, right now I'm working on Hell of a Boss, and I'm also working on some of my own little personal projects in the meantime. Ooh. And uh, what else? What else words should I say? I don't know, man. What's your favorite animal? I like the pangolin. Oh, they're so cool! I love yeah. them. They're like little armored animals. Yeah, they're like armadillos, but slightly more metal. They like just, they slicker just... armadillos. Yeah, they have like big, they have scales. They're like kind of like dinosaurs. And uh, they have like little echidna faces, snouts. Oh yeah, yours is better. Oh yeah, yeah, I see it now. <laughs> I like yours too, it's cute. <laughs> The real one has like a, like a like little droopy. Oh, that's true. Yeah, they're like echidnas. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I, they're kind of... I, they might be related to anteaters or something. Maybe. We need to get a Knuckles that is realistic. Yeah. <laughs> the droopy I think face. I think I should probably avoid drawing Knuckles for the rest of my days for, <laughs> for certain reasons. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but Sonic never had a had a pangolin character. Well, now's your chance. Let You should make one one day. <laughs> Your yeah. Sonic Zona, or whatever they're called. My, my, my Sonic OC. <laughs> exactly. Sonic OC is going to be a, a pangolin. Yeah, he would fit right in, because they can like roll up like hedgehogs, kind of, I think. And they're already bipedal. <laughs> that's true. Um, all right. So I, I guess, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, that's it. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, this will be it. And <laughs> I'm really glad to have partaken. And I hope no, people learned a lot. <laughs> that's not true. So let's talk about the holidays. Do you have a favorite holiday dish or song or tradition or anything you like to do during <laughs> the holidays? So during the holidays, uh, me and my fam, we like to just kind of do the typical, you know, turkey dinner. It's traditional American, just fattening up. Uh, we just like watching Christmas movies and such. Uh, I know... Going out around on Twitter these days, there was like a poll of like, which Christmas movies are your favorites of these selections? And uh, I think I'm in the minority of people who actually like the Polar Express Christmas movie. <gasps> it's so uncanny. What? It sure is. <laughs> but it, uh, I think outside of the animation, it's I think it's a very nice like Christmassy mood, even though it's very uncanny. And I, and I don't blame anyone for hating it. <laughs> Well, maybe but, uh, if you watched it when you were young, like maybe it's no nostalgia or something. Yeah, now nah, nah. if I saw it with my current like, picky adult brain, I'm sure I probably would have just hated the animation and walked out. <laughs> but uh, if they just if they just remake it, like to keep the story exactly the same, but remake it with just more cartoony designs, I think it would be lovely. Maybe you should. Maybe we should give uh, Michael be a call. Hey, let's make a remake of Polar Express. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's do it. I, I'm down. That's one remake I actually want to see. I bet he's gonna have the trains fighting like a uh, Pacific Rim creature or something. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, the, yeah, the Polar Express too. They turn into mechas. <laughs> the Polar Gundam. All right, and and 2020 has been one heck of a year for many reasons. Uh, but can you share like one amazing positive things that happened during that year, except of expecting a sequel of Polar Express. Yeah, I mean, that's the big one, but uh, other besides that, I think just getting to work on Hell of a Boss has been really, really cool. And that's uh, that's certainly a, a big highlight for me, just being able to be part of a, a little animation pipeline that I haven't... I've, I've been a part of animation pipelines before, but not quite to that level of, like, lots of people working on one project. Studio caliber, kind of, even though it's still an independent web series. And I guess it's like, uh, like a daisy, like you have this um, Discord channel where everybody works and stuff. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's, uh, and I, I can definitely see that just becoming the norm going forward. Cause it's, it's pretty easy to keep track of everything in there. Yeah, and you can work with many people from around the world. Yay! Yeah, yeah, I love that uh, more like remote work is becoming more common, like how even certain big anime productions have a bunch of people working from outside Japan. Mm-hmm. It's really exciting to see because that gives me hope that maybe one day I can be an anime. You want to be an anime? <laughs> I want to be an anime. 
I will someday. You just you watch. Oh, you said in. I thought you, you said, oh, okay, no, you will be. No, I'm, no, I am going to be an anime. <laughs> I'm going to be one. And so while you do that, can you tell us about your work? Because you said you really like to be on um, Hell of a Boss. And by the way, how did that happen? Did you apply? Did people reach out to you? Yeah, so uh, me and Vivzy followed each other on Twitter for a while, and then a while back she just hit me up in the DMs and asked me if I wanted to work on it. And uh, I think at the time I was busy working on Super Meat Boy Forever, which mm -hmm. is another cool thing I got to be a part of. But uh, then eventually my schedule cleared up a little bit, and I was able to able to join up on that. And uh, I helped out a bit with the first episode that just came out on Halloween this year. And then... I'll be doing much more scenes for future episodes coming out afterwards, so that'll be fun to look forward to. Ah, oh, that's really nice that you're able to do um, these projects like on freelance and and it's hand drawn, so that's nice as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy with the the style they go for because like it's the it's a kind of style where you can copy paste certain elements to speed things up since it's still it's got to be done on a reasonable amount of time, but it's as far as like. A, a big show with a big pipeline goes. It's still a lot of just hand-drawn elements, a lot of frame-by-frame -frame scenes, and it's really, really good to see that kind of stuff because I'm always a big fan of frame-by-frame. -frame. Oh, it's yeah. my favorite style. If I was better at cutout, I guess I would like it, but I need to practice. <laughs> point, point. Yeah, I, I'm... For a while, when I was like a little younger, I was like, Ugh, cut out, no, that's not that's not as good. But there's actually been some really, really good advances in cutout technology and cutout styles in shows lately. Progress. Yeah, because like, because uh, like, there's lots of shows nowadays that they use cutout like rigs and stuff, but they still there's a lot of drawings that they still switch between, so it feels a little more natural and more exciting to look at. Yeah, well, you save time where you can, and mm -hmm. that's fun. And like, even most yeah. big cutout productions that I know that I love, usually they just rough out in frame by frame, and they just use the rig to uh, clean it up. So you mm -hmm. so you waste less time redrawing the same freaking eye. Yeah. <laughs> Six eye. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because like there's a lot of times where an eye isn't gonna like even if you're doing frame by frame, the eye might look the same for several frames anyway. So if you can save time doing little things like that, that'll save you a lot of headaches. Oh, uh, you became an anime. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that became my favorite anime. All right, and so when you work. Uh, when you animate and stuff. If you receive a scene, how do you approach a new scene that you just received? So usually when I get a scene assigned to me and then I have to work on it, I will usually try and like really just scribble out something very scribbly just to get like an idea of where the characters are going to be, where their size is, where like the how they're proportionate to each other. And uh it depends. Sometimes I approach scenes differently because sometimes we want to do like keyframes first. So I'll do, a, like I'll go throughout the entire scene and just get the, the poses out and draw them cleanly. But uh, other times I'll kind of be, I'll I'll take it more like by the motion. So I'll I'll scribble out a really rough looking motion just to see how that how it moves, as opposed to getting the clean keyframes down. So I don't have just one like method that I go through from all of my animations, but I tend to switch between a couple like that, where uh, sometimes I prioritize clean keyframes, and sometimes I prioritize doing motion first. I guess it depends also if you're working for you or for someone else at the same time. Yeah, yeah, For if I'm working for myself, it's usually I do the scribbly motion method. And then <laughs> if I'm working for like Hello Boss, they want to prioritize keys more. So I'll get the keys done first and then I'll smooth out the motion later. But yeah, it's a, for, for pretty much any art project I do, it's like the, I don't have just one technique. It, usually I'll switch between a few depending on the project. And how much does the storyboard slash animatic help in your animation? Like how do you use it? Cause I have lots of students that are like, oh, why can't animate? I'm so bad, but, but like they try to start from scratch, but actually the storyboard usually is there to help you out, right? Yeah, definitely. Cause uh, I'm, I'm also I'm often not very good at just like making a pose from scratch because that can be pretty tough. Especially I thought I was the only one. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's tough. It's tough just building a pose for a character to do out of nothing, and uh, having a storyboard there to kind of have the characters doing something before you start animating is a big help. So like, if a character has to be doing some kind of uh, action pose, 
it'll be easier if they have like a little rough sketch of like, all right, here's where their feet are, here's where their arms are. And then you can kind of use that as a basis to, to like build off of, which is, it's a lot easier to troubleshoot that than it is if you were just doing it from scratch. And yeah, then the storyboard also just helps with like knowing this is the basic composition of the shot. Cause like, I'm still learning a lot about shot composition and just setting up a scene well. So it's, it's cool to be able to give the characters like my own acting kind of with the composition and the scene layout already set up for me. Storyboarders, they're really great at having these dramatic composition, these nice poses, but then when it's time to make it move and add in-betweens and timing, they're like, nope, leave that to edits. <laughs> so yeah. I, I guess you can't be awesome at everything right now. So it's always a bit of learning. Yay. Yep. Yep, it's uh, you don't have to be a master at every single uh, little element. You can you can learn as you go. You can try different parts, and it's a, it's it's fun to try different little uh, little parts of the process. Because for a long time, I was only doing just stuff for myself, which was like, all right, I'm gonna storyboard, and I'm gonna rough it, and I'm gonna clean it, and I'm gonna color it, and it, it was that was fun when I was starting out, just making silly little like Game Grumps animations mm -hmm. back in the day. But uh, nowadays, it, that gets a little exhausting because like. The better you get at animation, the longer that stuff is going to take. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. Now that I'm working on stuff with a team, it's a lot more reasonable. It's like I'm I'm handling one part of the process. I'm a rough animator, so I just take care of the rough animation, make the movement look good, and then give something for the cleanup artist to work with. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun to be able to be part of a process. Because for a while, when I was younger, I was just like, I don't I don't want to be part of a pipeline. I want to do everything myself, and I'm going to get rich off my own ideas, and I'm not going to have anyone help me. Uh -huh. And now I'm just like, nope, that's not how you do it. <laughs> you want, you're working with the pipeline is is good experience, and it's also satisfying to have a whole team work on something together. Yeah, because sometimes when you can't do something, you can be like, ah, somebody help me, give me give me guidance, and people can help you and give you <laughs> guidance. Yeah. You can learn from each other. A second brain to think with. Big brain. Or bird brain. That's me. Bird brain. <laughs> it's you. You know, bird, birds have like little peanut brains. My dog has a peanut brain as well. <laughs> Is your dog a bird? Maybe. You should give your dog a bird sona. <laughs> oh my god. You'd have a super long face. <laughs> it's a bird with a really long dog face. <laughs> exactly. And speaking of not working alone. What are some good advice that you receive from either like a mentor, a colleague, a friend, a dog, anyone you... A dog. Yeah, so like, I guess I don't, I haven't received like, uh, like, like advice in a typical sense, more so that I, we just kind of are learning from each other just how to, how to get a pipeline down. But um, like, in that sense, I've learned a lot just how to try and gauge my time out better and not to uh not to be perfectionist about everything because you got to get stuff done at some point and it's it's a good idea to try and pick out certain elements that aren't going to be noticed by anyone but you and make sure that you're focusing on the important things because otherwise if you focus on everything individually every single element of an animation like down to the background like dust particles <laughs> and you're spending as much time on all that then it's never going to get done and no one's going to see it so it doesn't matter how good it is but uh Besides that, there was one piece of advice that I, I heard on a stream. Not, I don't know this person uh, personally, but uh, Toniko Pantoa, I think mm -hmm. his name is pronounced. Yeah, he. Um, I was watching a stream of his a long time ago. He does really good animations. And he, he showed me the light in terms of animating without using onion skin constantly. Oh, flipping. Yeah, flipping. Because uh, when I was younger and less experienced, I thought, oh, just use onion skin for everything because that's just what it's there for. You use it to like fill in the in-betweens and stuff. But he he very smartly pointed out that that can often lead to less appealing looking animation because if you're only focusing on looking like the faded images left to right and filling in what's in between, that doesn't always mean the pose looks right. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're just going in between all the lines, it's uh, you're just filling in kind of like mathematically I almost. I mean, that's what they do for animes, but at the same time, they have less frame and their process is a whole lot different. Like they don't have the rough stage of animation. It goes from like key poses to um, um, final. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, is that true? Yeah. That, uh, that was a the, huge the... shock when I went to teach there. <laughs> like, huh. Okay, let's do a rough layer. They were like, Nani. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that was a culture yeah. shock. Like animation, Western and Eastern animation is so much different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. They still use paper a lot over there. Yep. Yeah, they use a... Because I've, I've seen a few uh, documentaries just lying around on YouTube of like the making of Kill La Kill, the making of Little Witch Academia, and uh, stuff like that. And uh, yep, I'm surprised at how, how much uh, paper stuff they still use because i've never animated on paper traditionally so to me flipping with paper looks really tedious and hard to get a grasp of it's hard and it hurts <laughs> it hurts you get paper so cuts. many paper cuts yeah it looks like because i'm so used to just in toon boom just pressing uh two little uh keys that my fingers are always on just to go left right left right left right and having to physically turn a piece of paper that's folding upwards that seems like a big disadvantage yeah, it's really hard. I mean, I did it in but, school. I'm glad I did because, you know, it's it's culture. It's like, oh, yeah, let's know yeah. where people come from. But like, you know, it's it's a uh, yeah, something you have. To yeah. yeah, it's definitely a good experience for sure. I'd love to give it a try if given the opportunity. I might I might want to do something like that during like the holiday time, like downtime. <laughs> and earlier you were talking about like working for yourself, like you didn't start on paper and etc. But what got you into animation? Were you one of these people who just found out the beauty of Flash and picked it up? And <laughs> <laughs> well, beauty and Flash are not two words I would put together lately. Well, but, maybe uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, 20 years ago, yeah, it was, it was magical. It's like, wow, I could draw on the computer and I could press <laughs> a button to make things move. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah, when I was like 10 or 11, I was able to get my hands on flash since my uncle worked in the industry Ooh. and uh so he was able to get me some flash mx 2004 <gasps> man me too oh my god wow. <laughs> wow yeah that's i guess flash mx is like a lot of a lot of folks in our generation might have just kind of started with that for some reason it was not even adobe it was like a um, macro media flash yeah MX. ah the good old days yeah i started with that and i would just be like I wouldn't even really make things that were unique to me. I would just copy things I saw on Newgrounds because I was so fascinated by the way they looked and the fact that you can just make anything. And like, I would just, I would just copy animations from Newgrounds that weren't even good. I would just like, wow, this silly Star Fox animation is so cool. Now I want to draw the Star Fox animation and I would never finish anything, you know, but uh, it was still a lot of fun. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah. And uh I always like pointing this out that the what got me into animation in the first place, what got me really excited about the process, was a little, a little, uh, a little fun little children's show called Kirby Right Back at You, <laughs> and it was, it was just, it was just the the anime about Kirby, the little pink man with Meta Knife and his crazy like, uh, I think he had like a Spanish accent or something. Yes, he's like Kirby. You and I must do battle now. I am a little ball, and so are you. And Kirby goes. Pryo! Uh, that but, uh, show is the, such a mystery to me because it. I used to watch it. It was in English, and I didn't speak English back then, so I don't know what was going on in that. <laughs> it was just about a little pink boy from space who falls to uh, Cappy Town, it's the town of Cappies. They're just little, like, kind of Animal Crossing-looking statue people. <laughs> and uh, but the reason that got me into animation is that they had an episode about making cartoons, oh. where, where they. Uh, King DDD, the big penguin man, he wanted to have a cartoon made about him. <laughs> so he just got everybody in town to help him make a cartoon. And they actually, for, for a kid's show, they actually did show the process. Like they showed drawing them on paper and then adding the backgrounds and then like, and doing the old fashioned taking a picture of each frame. And then, and then the, it culminates in them watching the anime like playback and recording their lines as it's playing back and it turns into a disaster. Oh. It's, but it's, it was it was a really cool just like intro a, a fun silly little intro to the animation process and I was like I want to do that and look at me now oh I'll have to look it up that looks very really interesting <laughs> yeah it's a it's it had a reanimate collab uh, a little while back like that episode it had a bunch of people get together and work on it yeah that's a, that that episode apparently got a, a resurgence in popularity. <laughs> So you're you're also a new ground baby. You were born and raised <laughs> on new grounds. <laughs> yep, a little bit. Yeah, I think I might have missed like the the first wave of really popular new ground stuff, but uh, I was definitely around for like all the Mario versus Sonic sprite animations. 
and all <laughs> all those things. I was really inspired by the Mario sprite animations for some reason. I think just the idea of being able to to take these graphics from games that I know and turn them into silly cartoons was like magical. And of course, most of them were just about making Mario characters poop on each other or whatever. But <laughs> it's art. Yeah. It's art. It is art. It's ex it's a form of expression. <laughs> So what do you like the most when you like animate? Like because to be in that industry, you have to have something that motivates you. Because at one point, just drawing is not enough. But like, what do you mm -hmm. enjoy the most out of it? So I guess I just like I like the idea that you can just take this little fictional drawing character that doesn't exist and you can make them move and act and give life to them. I just think that's a really cool thing to do. So by the end of the process, it's. Like, it can be a tedious process, but once it's over and you actually see the characters moving, it's just like, ah, yeah, that's what it's all about. And so if you can give a character a really uh, engaging performance, that's a very satisfying thing to watch unfold. It's like raising children without having to raise children. <laughs> actually, it reminds me of the Kirby character, the painter, who... Uh, yeah, Adeline or something. Yeah, who draws and the drawing become alive. That's what we do. Yeah, yeah, it's true. This, uh, this girl... Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, this is... <laughs> I need to bring her back. <laughs> oh my god. And she just painted Meta Knight to life. I like your Meta Knight, and we got a... Is that horse from something? Uh, it's... it's uh, I don't know. No. Well, it's hmm. it's a classic thing, but it's no one. It's no one. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Let's make it a zebra. Now it's a, a zebra. Yeah. <laughs> now it's a zebra brain zebra. Oh, <laughs> And can you tell us about your first job, or couple of jobs? Because uh, I think you've been freelancing most of the time. Like, did you ever step in a studio or something? So I have not worked in a studio yet. So like working on Hell of a Boss has been the closest I've gotten to working on a studio project, just because it's, it's a lot like a studio pipeline, it seems. But yep, I've never worked in a studio yet. My first job, let me think, well, my very first one, I believe, was like my first animation job was doing uh, ninja sex party videos, I believe. That's not so bad for a first job. <laughs> I would do yeah, it. it was. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think my first paid animation gig was doing the. It was like a segment of a ninja sex party video, so I didn't start out doing an entire like video. I did. They had a live action video that I did a segment for. Which one was it? It was Attitude City. Oh yeah, my god, that's was, true! I, I went, oh, you're the one who made those, I forgot! <gasps> yeah, and I made Ninja Brian Blink and made everybody mad. <laughs> it's so cool, <laughs> Like, back then they were popular, but they weren't like as huge as they are now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just, so I just hit them up on Facebook and I was like, uh... Because I think they favorited, like, one of my, like, parody animations, like my little... Uh, one of my little Game Grumps animations, and they were like, uh... I just I just messaged them on Facebook and was like, hey, I saw you favorited my thing. Thanks. Would you like to work on a thing, perhaps? And uh, surprisingly, they said, yeah, yeah. Let's let's do a thing. That that is insane. Yeah, I was, I was like starstruck back in the day. And it's really it's really fun to hear that because um, often I have uh, the students I mentor or that I teach to or something. They're like, oh yeah, well I'll never get my chance. Uh, like, like nobody asks me, and I'm like, you know, big boy. Sometimes you have to ask. <laughs> like, you have yeah. to step it up and ask for some something. So, I mean, because the the worst that happens is that they say no, and you're like, okay, and then you maybe try again later or something. But I'm happy that it worked out. Yep, yep, because that that's a big part of it is just putting yourself out there and making yourself known to people and sometimes that involves uh, like reaching out yourself mm -hmm. and i guess it also involves fan art yep yep do fan art it's a it's a valid thing because uh it's very difficult to make a name for yourself with your own original projects before people know you yeah how are they like, gonna even, find even, you <laughs> yeah because even if it's the best thing ever it's like people don't know to search for it because it's not an established thing mm -hmm. so if you start out doing fan art of just things you like then fan people are more likely to stumble across that, and then they might end up being interested in your original projects too. Yeah. Oh yeah, you said earlier um, that it's hard to learn everything. Like we can't be good at everything, at least not yet. Some people are, but let's not talk about those people. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 
If you could excel in another discipline that is not one of your main area of expertise, because like you're amazing at animation, at drawing and stuff, uh, is there something in animation that you would love to do? If you could do it for a day, what would it be and why? Hmm. Like if I could do a different job than usual for mm -hmm. a day. So like, would that include maybe like even just deciding the kind of things that are going to happen in the cartoon? Like, like writing or... Yeah, you could be amazing at writing, so then you'd have an amazing script to animate on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I definitely would like to uh, uh, get better at writing, because I, because as I, I am trying to work on my own show at some point, so I do want to get better at writing for sure. And uh, I think, I think my specialty in terms of writing is just thinking of cool ways for characters to kick the crap out of each other. <laughs> I think, I think I do have really awesome ideas in my brain for that stuff. And I need to get better at actually having character reasons to do that but uh <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm a big fan of just thinking of cool like fight set pieces and stuff like that azula and kirby thing you did I yeah that. yeah yeah exactly i think yeah i think i i one of my strengths i guess i would say for fight animations or fight scenes is just like thinking of fun ways for characters to win or lose and i definitely have some ideas in my brain for like original fight scenes that i really want to get out there someday but yeah i would like to Definitely improve my writing skills to make characters that people care about and and maybe like someday work on writing an episode of a different show like somebody else's show because I know a lot of cartoons have multiple writers mm -hmm. like working on different episodes and stuff. So yeah, that'd be a, a cool change of pace. And I also just do, I want to get better at like doing paintings like finished paintings and stuff because uh, I'm I'm always a fan of starting paintings and then I can never make them like look good when I'm finished and I'm always I always want to get better at that. What is usually the thing that it's kind of hard. It kind of gets you to stop <laughs> working on it, yeah. like the tipping point. <laughs> so I find that the the beginning of a painting is really hard for me and the end of a painting is really hard for me. Like there'll be a, a stretch in the middle where I'm feeling like, hey, I'm feeling this. I'm, I'm doing pretty okay. But the, um, I have a really hard time starting a painting, like getting a sketch that looks like a good composition. It like, I'll, I'll rough sketch something for like hours and just keep deleting them over and over again. And I'll be really frustrated, and then sometimes I'll just stop. But uh, if I get lucky, then I'll get a good one, and then I'll start uh, kind of just painting and getting the colors down and starting to get something I'm happy with. But then once I get closer to the tail end of it, then I'm like, all right, now I have to kind of clean it up more, and I have to get the details looking right. And I, I have a hard time making paintings look finished. And uh, And I know a lot of that involves, like, you don't have to give equal detail to everything in a painting. It's so hard. In fact, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's like, and you shouldn't give equal detail to everything in a painting because like, that's one of the principles is just like you give detail to the stuff that's most important. But yeah, I have a hard time figuring out what the stopping point is and when I should stop adding detail or when I should add more. So yeah, painting, there's a lot to it. And animation is my, my main... Uh, my main career path, I guess. So I'm trying to get better at painting, but I, I sometimes get discouraged just because it's not my like my main source of work, and so I don't have as much time to improve it. But that's also important to note because I teach to lots of students, and I always tell them you have to see it kind of like a video game. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, uh, your character cannot be amazing at everything, mm -hmm. especially in school. It's so hard to be good at backgrounds, painting, animation, character designs. So like listen to others and get get good feedback and collaborate because you can't be good at everything right away yeah exactly you gotta just take it as it goes and work on work on uh work on your skills but don't get discouraged if they don't improve right away because mm -hmm. that's another thing to keep in mind is that like even if you don't feel like you're improving if, if you're drawing you're improving it's like you won't you won't always see the results right away but you're not, you're not going to get worse by drawing. You're going to always get better. I think that's one of the things on your channel that really got me at first, uh, when I didn't really know who you were. Because <laughs> mm. um, you were one of the only animators out there who really put like the rough and the work behind the animations. And I thank you for that. And that's very, very interesting. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I really like sharing the process because I always like... Whenever I see animation, like movies and shows that I really like, I always wish they would have more material to look at like that. 
Oh yeah, because usually the making of is like, hey, these are the voice actor and they voice the character yeah. and they're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most making of like on DVDs of cartoons, they kind of stink. That's, yeah. that's, I hate to say it, but they do. Madagascar so, had a really good one though. The oh, cool. Movie. But, yeah, I, I like the designs of Madagascar. Yeah. I like the, the more angular style. Yeah, that's what the making of is all about. But uh, like you say, most of them is like, hello, it's the voice actor. Yeah, and then they're like, here's where we do the animation. And then they show the screen for one second, and then that's it. Or sometimes they're like, here's where we do the animation, and you have somebody painting a fucking background. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They don't they don't know which part is which. But yeah, there's... I was, I was really happy to find a few, uh, like, anime making of documentaries on YouTube of, of shows that I really, really like. Like uh, the Studio Trigger stuff. Yeah, you saw the one for... Um, um... Ah, I forgot! My Little Witch Academy. Yeah, lickle, yeah, lickle, lickle, wickle, acadickle. But uh, yeah, yeah, they have some really good ones there because they actually show you like the animators working at their desks and doing the roughs and then getting corrections from the director or the supervisor. And like uh, they have the main guy, uh, uh, what's it, Yo Yoshinari, I think. He's uh, they show him like standing up in front of the animators and like doing a throwing motion to improve the animation they're doing for one scene, and like. Just stuff like that. It shows you the little things they do to improve the animation, and just like go step by step. And then, and then they still have stuff about the voice actors too and stuff, so you get to see all the different steps. But they uh, they do it a lot more justice than a lot of uh, American DVDs do. I mean, I love the voice actor, and I love to hear what about what they do. But you know, maybe not mm -hmm. for forty five minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like give each part uh, equal timing because it's all important. I was very shocked when I learned, though, that uh, anime, they animate and then they voice act. Yeah, that was super weird for me, too, because I, I had a contract for something there. And we're like, yeah, do we get some voice to animate, too? They're like, no, no, just, just do random mouth um, motion and we'll record on top of it. I'm like, wow, my brain yeah, that's... broke. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I don't I don't see the uh, the benefit to that as someone who's never done like that. Because I, I know that's that's totally industry standard over there. But um, I feel like if you just had the voices first, you could still do the, the mouth flaps afterwards. Yeah, I don't Cause, know. Because if you have to fit your voice to the animation that's already there, that's when you're going to get like really weird inflections. You, you're, you're, uh, you have to fit the speed of the talking, even if the words aren't necessarily going to sound natural. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what a lot of dubs end up sounding like. So yeah, you're also a Harmony user. And yes. yeah, so what is your favorite thing about working in Harmony? Because there's so, so many like software to choose from. Like, why this one? I really like how stable it is. It's got very few like glitches and problems that just bug me to no end. I'm like certain other software by Adobe that uh, <laughs> um, it's a... Uh, yeah, compared to Flash, I'm just gonna compare it to Flash because that's what I, <laughs> that's what I'm familiar with. It's got very few just, just random things that happen that ruin the scene or that that crash the program or whatever. And it's it's just a lot more stable and a lot more features that speed up the process. And it's just drawing feels great. The brush feels great. Uh, the peg system is absolutely incredible. It's just, it's. Uh, so much more organized and easy to use than like putting all the symbols in flash in like different symbols and layering symbols inside symbols and they all have a timeline and then <sighs> yeah they all have their own timeline inside of timelines and it gets really really convoluted but pegs you can do all that stuff right on one timeline and you can use it for all sorts of stuff you can even use it just to like put things in like little folders but uh yeah just the peg system is good the brush Compared to Flash, the brush is actually, you know, it's actually, I don't even think the brush in Toon Boom is necessarily special. It's more that Flash is just so much worse than every other art program in that and regard. And at the same time, you work on 15, right? Yeah, I'm actually a few versions behind you. Because the drawing engine got revamped in 16 or 17 or something. So it's, so what you have now, imagine it just being better. What? Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to upgrade at some point. I, pr I probably should. I should give it a try. 
but uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of how the brushes work. And I love that you can do vector layers or bitmap layers. That's a big, it's a big draw for me because I like doing rough animation with bitmap. And you can even have both. You can have mm -hmm. vectors with a bitmap costume. Yeah, costumes. Yeah, you can uh, give the the new uh, vector brush textures with bitmap textures on a vector brush that you can still bend and move around and stuff like a vector line. That's 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 bonkers. It's <laughs> wild. And what is the thing that perhaps you like a bit less about the software? So there's very there's not really any big complaints I have. It's more like a couple of little things. Because it's a uh, holiday, like maybe maybe maybe. Maybe Santa is going to hear that and be able to Maybe. provide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if Santa's listening, he might, here's my one big request. And I don't know, maybe they added this already in like the later versions. Uh, you know, the light table, the little light bulb you click to you know, make the, like the only, only the layer you're working on is like fully op opaque and the rest are transparent. Mm -hmm. Just the light table. I, I wish it would stay like that when you're playing it back because the light table turns off when you press the play button. I know! It's one of the and things I, that annoys me the most in the software. Yeah, okay, so that's still the case. Because, uh, yeah, whenever I want to play it back looking like that, I have to change the layer opacities to yep. just to keep it looking, which isn't the, the, a huge deal. But I would really, really like to keep the, the light table as it is, like, just turned on and off, like, during playback. So that's my that's my number one request for Toon Boom Volume 3 or whatever. <laughs> what and else? And what are the three? I say three, but it might be more. Um, features or nodes, like tools or nodes or something that you couldn't mm -hmm. live without. Uh, like the thing the you cutter tool. The most. Oh, for the sure. The cu cutter tool, for one, that's such a good tool. It's just like, for those who don't know what the cutter tool is, it's like, you can just uh, draw this. Yeah, when you draw like the little green motion sheet is made there, that gets rid of this part. Teamwork. And like, it's, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we just <laughs> have a little demonstration in a in a software that's not Toon Boom, but. Uh, yeah, just the cutter tool it, for vector brushes lines. It just gets rid of stray lines in like one little swipe, and it's really helpful. And on top of that, you can uh, you can just like use it to select a part quickly of a drawing and move it around. So like that, uh, peg system obviously. Uh, the I like that you can sync layers. That's one of my favorite features is syncing layers to have the same timing. Oh yeah. Yeah, along with drawings updating live, like how drawings and like new drawings are separate. Like, uh, that's always this part's always hard to explain in words for people who haven't used it. I know, <laughs> right? Like how uh, you you have a drawing, like this little fella, and then you can copy that same little fella to like a new frame on the timeline. But um. You can either do it so that it's its own new keyframe like Flash where you draw on this one and then it's it's different. Or you can have them be the same drawing, just another instance of the same drawing, so that when you draw something on one, then it does it on the other automatically. So you just keep copying and pasting this one whenever you need it and it's the same. And then if you need to make a change to one, it makes a change to the other. Nice explanation. Ever considered being a teacher? Uh, not seriously, but I would I would certainly be open to it. I always uh, just never feel like I I know enough. I feel like I've already explained most of the things I know. <laughs> but, oh no, uh, let's not get into imposter syndrome. Not today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but but yeah, I'm like I wasn't always thinking about becoming a teacher, but nowadays if I can if I can help more people get into Toon Boom instead of Flash, I would be more than happy to do my part. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crusade. <laughs> It is. I really, really want to get everybody who uses Flash to stop using Flash because Adobe does nothing but make it worse over and over again. It's true. It's so much better. Yeah, I mean, I was Flash for years until I switched. Yeah. Yep, me too. I was using nothing but Flash for a while because I was like, you know, this Flash is a little a little bonky. It's a little wonky, but it's, you know, it's easier to learn than Toon Boom, and I don't want to learn a new program. <laughs> and then I learned Toon Boom, and I was just like, oh my god, what have I been doing my entire life? And, yeah, because uh... it's just... So much more user friendly. <laughs> like if it, the end product they make starts, they're still great. Like uh, like Zorill and and Shucheru, they make amazing stuff. It's just I always look at it and think, wow, that's amazing. That must have been really really annoying to make in Flash. That's the thing, because people say, oh, the software doesn't make the artist, but I'm like, it sure helps. Instead of yeah, wasting exactly. time with your workaround, you could be like productive 
and yeah that's that's the thing like toon boom it doesn't make you a good artist automatically it just makes the process a lot less of a hassle yep and that's the thing flash is a hassle to work with it's a it, it's constantly crashing it's constantly causing problems that don't need to be and the I don't want to turn this into this like dump on Flash the whole stream, but I, but, let's <laughs> but I do gladly it. <laughs> will. Yeah, absolutely. It's a crusade. Yeah, really. Everybody, join us, brothers, sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Toon Boom is the way. Wow. Yeah, I'm not paid by Toon Boom, by the way. <laughs> I am, but not today. <laughs> she is. Why not? <laughs> I was not before, and I bought the software, so I can vouch for it. I gifted yeah, it to my best friend because I don't need it anymore. Oh. Okay, and now since it's the holidays, to give back to the lovely people listening to us, um, do you have some artists that you look up to or that you could recommend us stalking? If there's many, I can also put them in the description. But like, like recently, do you have any artists that you follow that were very inspiring? Uh, because there's there's plenty. There's so many. I'm mm -hmm. like uh, Twitter and stuff that are just uh, super cool. And our art station just scrolling through art station is always a, t a ton of inspiration uh there's i'm trying to think of this like off the top of my head like some really good animators uh there was uh how do you pronounce it it's Oli Loken, i believe it's pronounced i just saw like he had a little reel of a bunch of little animations that he's super good he's got some like smurf animations that have been going around for a while uh like 2d animations and uh i think I, I don't want to get people mixed up. I think he worked on Klaus, the the Netflix movie. Maybe. But uh, yeah, he's really good. Um, just my uh, my good friends, my good, like uh, yeah, my, our our good mutual friend Renee Violet. Oh yeah. Always doing really good stuff, uh, making both animations and uh, paintings, and like going going for all, like learning all sorts of different skills, like she does. She uh, hand drawn animation. She does. The other day. She what that? She painted. Oh yeah, she my painted. Dog. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> she came over to your house and just started painting him. I wish. <laughs> yeah, she's paint painted. Got paint all over your dog. <laughs> but yeah, I'm always impressed to see people who can do lots of different types of animation and art and stuff. And then uh, uh, Dave Raposa has really good uh, paintings that I've been really into lately. He does like uh, a lot of anime paintings, like uh, Berserk and Evangelion and whatnot. Yeah, that's a. There's just all sorts of. It's it's hard to even pick a few, on on the internet just because there's so many. Well, that's more than enough. Thanks for sharing. And any Absolutely. books, uh, um, yeah, any books or like other accessible learning material that people could look into. You know, like that sweet. Um, making of you were talking about before. I'm gonna link that. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely the uh, the making of like Studio Trigger shows, Little Witch Academia, and Kill La Kill. There's some good videos on those, and those are both really really good looking shows. Kill La Kill is one of my favorite animes, and um, one of the guys who worked on it, Yo Yoshinari, he has some books. He has a sketchbook that I really really like. Oh, it's yeah. just like a yeah, it's just like a kind of a coffee table book full of his sketches, and there's so much. He's got one of my favorite art styles ever. It's really flowy and really expressive. And uh, he's got, like, just random sketches and then a few here and there that look like they're for, uh, like, concept art for Kill la Kill and Panty and Stocking and stuff. So, uh, yeah, those are some of my favorite books. And I know there's um there's a new anatomy book, I think, that just came out. Yes, Super Annie U.S. Uh, Stonehouse Anatomy Stonehouse Anatomy book. That's what I was looking at. That was a really good looking anatomy book that I haven't looked at or haven't gotten it yet, but I want to get that really bad because it looks really good. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's my recommendation for a, a, like a three minute explanation of a book I don't even have yet. But, um, and then besides that, obviously, the Richard Williams' Animator Survival Kit. That's what everybody always says, but it's because it's, it's very good. It's true. <laughs> yep. It's, yep. It li listen to that book, but also feel free to listen to music while you work because that, that part is. Uh, that's the controversial page. What? Wait, wait. So you agree with that or not? No, no. Yeah, I, I agree that you should be able to listen to anime oh, to music course. while you. Yeah, yeah. No, him him saying that you can't do that is is a little silly. But everything else is good. <laughs> and I want to thank you again for providing the animation scene that I dissected and I will be able to give to people who want to try it out. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Was, I'm, I'm glad you thought that was a good choice. Yeah, I hope people have fun digging through that because I, I had fun making that little test scene with my characters. Mm -hmm. And for final words, because um, as artists, we are little sensible beasts. We sometimes get sad and upset and sometimes we hate everything we do and sometimes we love it. To deal with these ups and downs, um, each of us has our own ways. And while we're not specialists in the matter, sometimes just sharing what we do when we feel a bit less good uh, can maybe inspire other. So yeah, when you have one of these rougher time of hating everything you do, how do you handle it? <laughs> Yeah, so really, when I'm really just down on myself and not able to get anything good done, it, what helps me is to just look at other art that I find inspiring and just try and give myself a little kick of motivation, like either watching really good web animations I like or anime or or movies or even just playing games that I find inspiring. Like um, I'm very inspired by the Dark Souls and Bloodborne series of games and stuff, that kind of stuff. Just sitting down and playing those always gets me a good jolt of inspiration. So just... Something that you find inspiring that really you think is a really incredible piece of art. Just just looking at somebody else's and maybe maybe studying it, maybe thinking about why does it appeal to you to, uh, so much. And then just hopefully that'll kind of get you into a, an art mood. It'll get you into the mood of wanting to make something. Because that usually helps me out. That helps me just to remember that art is really cool and that it's something that you want to make. And even if you're not totally happy with what you're doing now, it'll get better as long as you keep at it. Wise word. And look at this lovely little spread we have here. I know, it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's got all sorts, all, sh all shapes and sizes. Yep. I like your, I like your little rodents in the, in the bottom. Thank you. Yeah, got like the, the Muppety one with the crown and the, a, little, a little sonic creature at the bottom. <laughs> I love your egg, um, DDD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like a big old penguin egg. He's, ups he's upset. He's upset that Meta Knight has a big sword and he doesn't. But as usual, I love everything you just drew. And no, I'm really grateful that you accepted to come on this tour. Yeah, I had a, yeah, it was a lovely time. I love drawing nonsense with y'all. Yay! But yeah, um, this was, it was a good time. <laughs> and unless you have anything else to add, I think this will be until next time. <laughs> I believe so. Alright, so. Until next time, people, bye! Bye-bye. <laughs>